it couldn't be shaken because it was founded on a rock. Now, the King James Version said that it was like a man who built his house and dug deep, and he laid the foundation on a rock, a stone, which is Jesus Christ. And when the floods arose and the storms beat vehemently, violently upon that house in which the Lord told him to build, and it could not shake, it could not shake, it couldn't, it, it couldn't shake it. It could, the King James Version said, and it could not shake it. But it was founded on what? The word of God, the rock. That's how you build on. When the enemy comes at you in situations in your life, you got to know how you built. Were you Teflon or were you just foil paper? Some people fold up under pressure. But the word of God talks about the other opposition in Luke 49. But he that heareth and does not is like a man who went out and found, a man who went, a man without, excuse me, without a foundation, in a house, no one would say, without a foundation, and built a house upon the earth, the world goods. I've got everything in the world I love. And the world got me everything. What is a man to live, to gain the world, and lose his soul? He's telling you this right here. Let me read it again over in the, in the King James Version. But he is a man and does not. That he hears the word and does not. He hears the word, but he does not. He is like a man without a foundation. Built in a house upon the earth. All the worldly goods he wanted. And against the streams did beat vehemently. They did come against him. The cares of the world did come against him. Kind of falls in line with the book of Luke. About when the sea sword came and sea didn't fall, you know, deep as it needed to go. Some fell shallow. But anyway, it did beat, beat vehemently. And immediately it fell. Why did it fall? And it was ruined. Or its ruins were great. The ruins of the house were great. He's not talking about a physical building. He's talking about you. He's talking about you. First of all, you didn't understand what Luke 48 said. And then you went around and tried to run around and think you can get over Luke 49. And then God exposed you. And now storms are coming against you, whooping you beside your head. You don't know what's going on. You got your kids running around, divorce coming at you. Your job been laid you off. Your finances are coming against you. You don't know which way to go. And God started slapping you beside the head and saying, I told you. I told you to obey the very things I told him in Deuteronomy. All of my statutes and all of my commandments. I'll sustain you. That whatever you have, your raiment, your show, your shoes, whatever you have, it won't wax cold. Therefore, do you keep the commands, it said in verse 6 of Deuteronomy 8. And thou Lord thy God will walk in his ways and fear him. How would you fear him? Come on back to Psalms 91. We out of here. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. The word shall abide. You got to be under there to receive the blessings of the Almighty. Says in verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is what? My fortress. He's all the way to run. He's my hedge. He protects me. In him and God will I trust. Surely he should deliver me from the snares and the fowlers and all the nuisance pellicents, all the diseases and sicknesses that try to come against my body. Plagues, like he said over in Luke 46. All those things that come vehemently against you. The word of God declares over you. And you look at the, the word of Psalms 37. He said, you don't have to worry about those things. Fret not yourself. Don't get anxiety and work up because of people who kind of come against you. God fights your battles. What you got to do, baby, to stand still and watch the salvation of God that he's going to do for you in the season which you're in. He says over the fourth verse. He shall cover you with his wings. And on his, uh, uh, his wings, excuse me. That your trust in the Lord, it should be thy shield and thy buckler. Let's look at that a little closer. He should be thy shield and thy buckler. I want to look at the, the fourth verse again. He should cover me with his feathers, and on his wings you shall trust his truth. His truth. I believe that's the, the, the main thing in the truth. The matter of the truth. Trust his truth, because he said his word won't go back void. He says, not a God that he should lie. So he's, he's true. He says, it's all his word above his name. So every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God goes forth. That's what he says in Isaiah 55, 11. He said, not only will it go forth, it will accomplish all what he sent it. So the word of God says once again in the fourth verse, he should be, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust his truth. Amen. Come on, somebody. His truth. You should trust his truth. His truth should be your shield and your buckler. Now, let me look, let's look at this a little closer. 
This passage, it says, has to do with the holies of holy. Am I in there somewhere? He speaks where he dwells between the cherubims. Amen? In the mercy seat, he invites Christ to dwell in you also there with him and turn Christ paid the price. You know, when he, when, he, when, he, when he invited Christ to come into that area, the dwelling in the midst of the mercy seat, he knew that the price that Christ would pay on the cross for the midst of all of our sins would be an enormous price. So he wanted him to know that. That when people come and pray, they know that Christ paid an ultimate price for their life. And whatever it is that they went through, it was God who brought them out of whatever is at the end. Am I in there with anybody? The Bible says that Christ paid the price for us. That the Holy Spirit may dwell in us. This is why we're talking about Isaiah 53. He was wounded. Come on, somebody. You got to get a W-A-S in there. He was wounded. Past tense, foul transgressions, and every one of us transgress, according to the book of Galatians 5 and 16, if we don't walk in the spirit, there's some things that come at us, that come at us, and we have desires of the flesh. The Bible said he was bruised. Am I in there somewhere? Foul transgress, we all transgressed against the word of God. We can see that over in the book of Ephesians. If you take your Bibles, you go to the book of Ephesians. All, matter of fact, you ain't got to go to the book of Ephesians. You can go to the book of Romans. And you can go up to the book of Romans. Let, let's look at the book of Romans here. So like I said, we're just teaching. We're just teaching. We, we're not trying to do anything other than just show you how powerful the word of Psalms 91 is and how it directs you in the midst of all the proclivities and all the storms that you're in. First of all, we got to come to Christ with a humble heart. And with that humble heart, we got to realize and understand that we ain't perfect. Ain't not one of us perfect. The word of God makes that very clear for any saint who's out there and claim they better than the other saint. God makes it known right here in Psalms 10. For it is written, there is none right, not one. The Bible declares like this. There are, uh, there are none that understand it. There are, all, there are none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. Totally. Notice what he's saying. Because all of us, our minds have been twisted to one point or another. Well, I don't know. I mean, I may mean, not love the Lord. Well, look, you still in the flesh. Let's get that right right now. You ain't no Enoch. You ain't Moses. And you sure ain't Elijah. You ain't got your new body. As long as you in the flesh, the same thing he said you was born into. You was born into sin. So your mind gets twisted and turned around all the time. That's why he tells you in Romans. I beseech you, therefore, brother, and by the mercy. I don't care if you've been in the ministry 50 years, 100 years. The devil still attacks your mind. That's why the word of God says you got to fight the good fight of faith. No one's perfect, he says, over in Romans 10. Over in 3 and 10. There was, he said we all have gone astray. He says over there we are all going astray. None of us seek it after God. Notice in the 12th verse. They have all gone out of the way or together become unprofitable. There was none that do good, not one. 23 gives a very strong statement about that. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you got to really understand that. We all got things that we deal with and go through in life. But as we go through, we got to understand what it says over here in the book of Psalms 4. That he's, he's covered us with his feathers and on his wings we should trust his, we should trust his truth. Should be his, our shield and buckler. Now he says it once again. He should dwell. He should cover you with his feathers, and on his wings you shall, you shall, you shall trust. Amen. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. His truth, and his shield, and be in his buckler. The word of God said, "You in the midst of you got to be in the trusting of God." He makes it very plain to every one of us. He should cover thee. He will cover you in me. With his feathers and on his wings, we all should trust his truth. His truth should be our shield and buckler. The only way we're going to move forward with Christ is to know he's shielding us with the truth. And the truth will be, is the very truth of the shield will cover us oh, in verse 1. We're under the shadows of the Almighty. And under the shadows of the Almighty, there's truth. That we're going to have to be truth with him also. It says in the fifth verse, but I should not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow to fly by day. Nor the pestilence that walking in darkness, nor the destruction that lay waste at noon, that we said all in the land of day, killings and shootings, even in the even in the even in the the, the, uh, the old our convention, 
Republicans fighting, the, the, the Democrats fighting. Everybody's fighting. Everybody's going back and forth to see who's better than who. All this is just a big storm to let you know that for y'all who are Christians, you ought to know this. You ought not be surprised. Because the word of God declares that the world will wax colder. It will, it will go wickeder and wickeder. The word of God declares that. He lets us know all those things. That these things will come and they will come against us. And our job as being man and woman of God is to stand firm in the midst of whatever it may be that's coming at us. We are designed and engineered as being man and woman of God to stay in the shadows of the Almighty. The Word of God says that even when we look around, we see all the chaos and destruction going on around us. He says, thousands are fought at that side and ten thousand at right hand. But it should not come near thee. Pastor Elsie got to get ready to go out here. But Psalm 91 is the topic of this very uh, Bible study this morning. It's an educational course that we're trying to get you to see that when you put all your trust in the Lord, it doesn't matter what the situation may look like that you're going through, God said you're under his shadows of his almighty. And only if you obey all his statutes and all his commandments. Don't build your house on the sand, he told you in Luke 6. You know what I'm saying? Even when he tells you in Psalms 23, he makes it very clear in Psalms 23. He makes it very clear. The Lord is your shepherd. You should not want. He maketh you to lie down in green pastures beside the still waters. He restores you, your soul. He leadeth you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yo, though I walk through what seems to be the shadows of the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art what with me. Thou rod the word of God. Am I in there anywhere? God got a plan that supersedes far beyond more than you can imagine to think of. He's your guide. He has everything you need and everything you want. Only if you put all your trust in him and believe and trust that he's God. And besides, he's there's no other. God got a plan for you to supersede more than you can imagine and even understand. I am Pastor Charles Oz here at Harvest New Light Church and Harvest New Light Studios here in the city of Dallas, Texas. And thank you guys for joining me on my actually morning uh, 1045 educational show. Today, and God bless you. God keep you. I hope there's something to help you. You want to get in contact with me, it's 214-870-2146. Or you can email me with all your prayer requests at Pastor Charles Ellis at gmail.com. Until then, God bless you and God keep you. And don't forget, you know, become a friend with me on social network. I would love to get back in contact with you guys and talk with you and pray for you. Until then, you be blessed, take care of ourselves, and be careful for nothing, but do all things in prayer and supplication that the will of God be known in your life. Amen.